So welcome back to Gem Gem Crypto. I'm your host today. My name is Jemmy. Today we have another interview episode because every once in a while, this channel will invite some of the most prominent players in the crypto field. Joined by me today is one of the biggest Taiwanese crypto influencer, and his name is Jimmy, who has also recently crossed the milestone of reaching 100k subscribers on YouTube. So how are you feeling, Jimmy? Mm, doing good. Great, it's great to have you. Well, since this is your first time here, why don't you start by introducing yourself and share a little bit of background, how did you get into crypto, etc. Hi everyone, my name is Jimmy, and um, actually, uh, for my first exposure to crypto was when I, uh, roughly around, I, I think it's like 2010 or 11 ish, but I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't know, um, what BTC is basically, uh, as through my cousin, actually, he bought me a copy using a Bitcoin and back in the time it was like 0.3 BTC. Wow. So it's, it's kind of quite, it's, it's quite expensive as, uh, like right now, but actually I didn't know anything until um, two, roughly around 2017-ish um, when I actually moved, um, I think it was like during like a Super Bowl season in US and then everyone trying to uh, try to gamble. And then uh, people use uh, BTC as a bet. So that's actually, that's the very first time I actually use BTC my, for myself. And then since then I started to um, uh, exploring like, for example, like mining and those kind of stuff. And then um, till 2021-ish and I started to, yeah, when the, when the time when I actually got back to Taiwan, and uh, I just I decided to uh, kind of like, share my experience. So I just I started the channel. Yeah, since then, I just I keep improving myself at, at, as well as like, um, I just basically deep, deeper on the crypto, like crypto knowledge kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. once you dive into the rabbit hole, there's no coming out, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. you're such a... Yeah. You're such an OG in the market. Like obviously you experience um, different bear markets, different uh, bull markets at the same time. So I wonder, cause um, you have seen different countries adopting Bitcoin, maybe El Salvador like two years ago as a, like a legal uh, payment across the whole country. But at the same time, we are seeing US being so against crypto. Like, what do you think that is? Because, well, I personally, uh, I'm living in Hong Kong and Hong Kong is trying to become the next crypto hub as well as Singapore. So Asia is doing amazing things for, like in terms of adopting crypto. And uh, while well, I actually, I just got back from Singapore like a week ago, that explained my massive flu and my nasal voice today. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. So like, why do you think that is like, Asia is doing like whether it's Korea, Japan, Hong Kong or Singapore, they are all trying to adopt crypto, but US is trying to push it away. So I, I guess like, what's your take on that? Um, I think it's like really reasonable because as a US right now, like US dollar is a world reserve currency and, and crypto is, I mean, you can say like crypto is, um, for example, if you think of like stable coins, kind of like a US dollar, but in terms of like in crypto way, but at the same time, it's still different than a US dollar itself. Like for example, uh, there's a good analogy. It's kind of like uh, when you are like playing some online games and like normal people has to go out and farm for the, let's say their game coins. But like, if you're like the, bank or you control the reserve currency you can print your own money and then buy your gear so so i think like it's really reasonable for us to kind of against this yeah since there are a lot of like country there is like trying to adopt the uh, uh, cryptocurrency so they don't want their um i think us don't, don't want they don't like competition so they want us to stay in the game. So the way for them to stay in the game is kind of like, hey, 
I kind of like the new innovation or new technology, but at the same time, I kind of want to like、um, kind of push it a little bit. So,、uh, so later on for、uh, and then、uh, compared to like other country, like for example Hong Kong or like Japan or like or even like China, I'll say for Hong Kong, like for Hong Kong.、Um, Hong Kong, I think they're like welcoming because of. I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Like,、um, because like Hong Kong dollar is pegged to U.S. dollar, so I think like it's easier for them to actually adopt the new technology, and then、um, from there they can actually、um, grow more opportunity later on. Like for example, like they are able to compete with like.、Um, Other Asia country, or I don't, I don't know. This is my 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 take. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. I love that. And I also noticed your channel kind of pivot from mining to、um, you do a lot of cold wallet comparison, right? So I wonder、uh, what、yes. what is your current favorite one and the reason.、Uh, in the past,、um, in the past, it was like kind of like Ledger, but because it's like adopting like everywhere, like and it's kind of like.、Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's like the biggest new market. So let's say MetaMask, they actually、um, they have a support for it right away.、Um, but right now, I kind of shifted a little bit. So my new favorite would be Tenjo Wallet. Tenjo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm not so sure if I heard it before, but I think it's it's more intuitive that way. I mean, it's more intuitive since you don't have to actually charge a device. Mm. And then、uh, you don't have any C phrase. I, I would say it's easier for beginners, and also it's it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I heard that Tangem is doing an upgrade.、Uh, they also have like the、um, recovery support, but it's not、mm-hmm. it's not like similar to the Ledger one. Uh, mm-hmm. But more on that later. I also I've got myself a, a Shiba Inu. Uh, Tangem card, so I order、uh, it. I'm really、yeah. excited to see how it turns out. Oh,、well, yeah, moving yeah, on yeah. to the next question that I wish、mm-hmm. to ask you is that because you cover a lot of like tools for users to、um, help them to get into crypto, etc. I wonder if you have any like come across any useful tools recently you can share to to our audience. A、uh, useful tool.、Uh, recently, actually, I covered one of the useful, really useful tool is、uh, CoinStats. I mean, that company actually has been around for several years, but I just didn't notice it. And then, like throughout, like because I went to like to twenty forty nine token event,、uh, <coughs> I met their CEO, and then happened to actually talk to the guy. It's really a、uh, really cool dude, and then. That product actually、um, they combine DeFi and CFI like together. So it's kind of like、um, like right now everyone has a、like, several exchange and then they probably have like several wallet and then or like even in inside of wallet it actually your asset probably on different chain.、Yeah. So so everything like you it's really hard to track on your like、um, it's really hard to track your assets. So. That thing just basically, I mean, points that's basically just like combine all all of it together, and then basically all your crypto in one place. You're easier to manage. I mean, it's easier for you to manage your assets. Yeah, I mean that thing is like really cool. And beside that, I don't know. I that side、like、is something that just on top of my mind right now. So yeah, it does sounds really cool. It sounds very convenient. It's like a A lifesaver. I haven't used that. Like honestly speaking, I haven't used that tool that you yeah, mentioned yet. Yeah, most of、yet. most most of the website, like for example, like D Bank or like Zapper, is on. It only allows you to track on the DeFi side, but none of them are able to uh let's say connected to finance or connected to OKX or whatever to actually manage all your assets in one place. Yeah,、oh, so、wow. I think that's a really clever. Wow, that sounds really great. Like I, I have、mm-hmm. used D Bank before, but as you、mm-hmm. mentioned, it's more for DeFi thing. But I haven't、mm-hmm. really come across any. I would say like trustworthy platform that I want to try out. Like that will combine CFI and DeFi. 
but like after you mentioned it, I'm probably gonna try it myself too. Yeah, I probably you can like try it right away. I mean, like the free. I mean, they got paid version, free version, but like for the free version is good for most of the people, but because it allows you to connect it to up to like ten different assets. I I, I mean, like、uh, for example, your wallet or your exchange. I, I mean, ten is a great number, right? Right for a lot of, I would、yeah. say, majority of people.、Yeah. Well, that's really good to know. This is why I love doing interviews with other guests because we can learn from each other. Well,、mm. um, moving on to the next question, like for newcomers, like you speaking as a such an experienced OG in the field, right?、Mm. If someone starts from nothing, like not much to begin with in the bank account. What would you recommend them to, you know, start checking out? Would you say airdrops or would you say just like DCA? Like, what's your take on that? Um, I think、uh, actually there will be like two options. Like, first option I would say definitely airdrop because like a lot of airdrop doesn't require you to have a lot of like initial capital. Like, for example, like recent one would be tips. It's kind of like a social. Uh, I would say like social interaction, like kind of like social fi、um, project. So you just need to like、um, go on your Twitter and then just like、uh, do your norm, like a normal post and do your normal things, but just with a hashtag of tips, and then you will be able to、uh, receive airdrop. And that's like really simple way for a lot of people don't have a, a lot of like initial capital、mm-hmm. to do it, and. This, and besides that, I I know a lot of like、uh, for example a lot of、uh, layer one layer two um, um, they do offer airdrop but I I would say in this like、uh, past two years the environment changed a lot、uh, a lot of like、um, let's say a、uh, Chinese like like small office or like、uh, their、um, they just use a a lot of bots. To actually to grind those like airdrop,、uh, it's really hard to compete with them, and I. So I, I will say, people, if they want to do an airdrop, is I mean, it.、Um, it should be focusing on the project side. Like for example,、uh, if you want to do like、uh, let's say optimism, like for example, if optimism doesn't have、uh, didn't have an airdrop. Uh, you or like the upcoming one, like let's say a scroll or layer zero Lina, don't focus it on the、uh, actual chain itself.、Uh, focus it on the project on the chain.、Mm-hmm. It, it will be、uh, you will get a higher chance to get an airdrop. And for、uh, DCA,、uh, for second second part you mentioned about like DCA,、um, I think yes. Uh, people can do DCA, but only on the the first two like、uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum. But I would say most most of the time will be on the Bitcoin because yeah, it fluctuates a lot. And also if but but the other like some people will also say like hey, if you don't have a lot of、uh, initial capital, then you should focus on like small project. I mean yes. But at the same time, it's kind of like gamble. It's not my type of style. Yeah. Well, that's really、mm-hmm. good tip. And at the same time, I find your content extremely insightful because you cover multiple sectors. Like, well, we just mentioned、uh, airdrop or layer twos or、um, DeFi NFTs and mining. So I wonder which sector are you most bullish on. Hmm. I would say. Actually, I'm、um, I I don't actually、uh, bullish on some particular like、uh, sector. Like for example, I think like DeFi is kind of like uh, uh, crypto utopia. Like every like, I, it's like in the perfect state. Like hey, it works perfectly flawlessly, and then it's like, a smart contract and will do everything. But as a as a reality, like、uh, everyone is like I I should I would say. People are greedy, so if they find a hole, they will just punch it open. So, for example, like for those like hackers, so those kind of thing. So, I would say DeFi will stay for sure, but like 
And also, there will there will be a new way, or not new way. I would say people will try to、um, evolve the DeFi. So DeFi will stay, but like、uh, NFT, it's like I would say I would say people will still hold on NFT. But like in the last year, the narrative was about like arts and those kind of like、uh, membership part. But I think like in the future, there will be a new. A、uh, new way to use NFT, besides like arts, yeah. And for mining,、uh, for mining, I, I I know like most of the people are like like for myself as well. Like、uh, they mine Ethereum for most of、uh, for most of their time. And right now, like、um, there's like yeah, since Ethereum is gone. You cannot mine it anymore, so people are still like trying to find a new project to do it. Like for example, I mean, I mean, right now you can still mine it, but I think later on will be a new narrative. That's just a bull guess, basically. I think the next narrative for mining probably is something、uh, linking back to like AI, because like you need like computing power to resolve those questions. But I'm not so sure. Like in the future, this is gonna be heading that way or not. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Got you. And you also mentioned something about greed, like how greedy everyone turns when we had the NFT craze or DeFi boom. And this、mm. kind of leads me perfectly to my next question: When do you、mm. think we're gonna see the next like this crazy hype again? Do you think we are near the end of the tunnel, the end of bear market? Or do you think like BlackRock gonna? Lead to the next bull run.、Um, actually, for this question, I think yes, and also I, I think like each bull run has it, it has its own narrative. Like、um, for the past, like there's like DeFi summer, NFTs craze, and like this time probably I think like this narrative. This time the narrative is gonna be like、uh, BTC having and then like.、Um, BlackRock joined the the like spot ETF thing, but like the thing is, like all of this narrative needs time to actually to actually show the actual result. So I think like <coughs> my bold guess will be like till probably like October two thousand twenty four. So it's kind of like late next year. So, like, if you like、uh, take a look on like a BTC having, like each having is like gonna be like、uh, like the bull run starts after like half year after the having, and then the funny part is like for、um, BlackRock when they submitted their、um, their application for spot ETF, like in US, like you like when they decided、uh, like really.、Um, When they decided on a certain like、uh, kind of like a climate changing law or whatever, or like passing something, they usually like to delay stuff. And when you actually take into the date they submit the application and how late the application can delay, it will be、uh, the last day for them to decide the spot ETF will be um, uh, next March. So it's the date is really close to the BTC having. So I think like when they set up the like these two narrative like right there, so I mean it's it will be easy to actually yeah like if the spot ETF didn't pass, we still have like BTC having, and then one or the other. I mean if both both of it works, then probably the bull run will come later the year.、Oh. That's my bull guess. I'm not so sure yet. Well, that's some very valuable insight, and I tend to agree with you、uh, at the,、uh, as well. Well, so so far we have talked about different sectors in crypto. We have talked about、um, the general crypto market. And moving on to the next question, I also wonder what is your favorite crypto exchange? Because right now we know the biggest one being Binance is facing so much scrutiny from. 
all around the world. So I wonder what is your like go-to exchange right now? My favorite one is JPEX. No, I didn't, I didn't, no, no, I, just, I didn't actually register for the account. Yeah, my favorite. My favorite no, as well. I love JPEX. <laughs> So actually, every, I think like every uh, exchange has its own unique, I would say unique points. Like for example, like for Binance, it has really um, high liquidity over there. So like if you are like trading for a large amount, like the slip that just minimal. So, but for let's say OKX, it has its own like, uh, I would say their, their wallet. I'm not so sure if you've tried it before, but like it's, it's really like user friendly. But I think like every, I mean, I use several exchange. Um, for me, my favorite one, um, I'm not so sure because like um, I use every single, I would say most of the exchange I use them, but I only use it at, at a certain point. Like for example, um, if I want, yeah, because like for me, I do arbitrage during like for like between different exchange. So I have to use all of it. So my favorite one, I would say like the top exchange, I, I, I all love it, but just like, I just use it for a different purpose. So, and then in Taiwan, I would say most of the people still using Binance. Mm -hmm. I would say that would be their go-to. I mean, in the past, they're like, uh, in the past, like for a lot of like OGs, like first of all, they started like, let's say uh, 2000, 2015 or 16-ish, most of are like, I would say most of the OG use FTX, but that is no longer exist. So beside that, I would say Binance will be uh, in, and mo most of the Taiwanese people will, will choose that. But they are still, yeah, newer, newer exchange is still like coming up, like they're like, uh, that's a big ad for the, some people like copy trading, they will use that platform or like for a lot of like uh, sm small tokens they will use for let's say a gate, a gate IO or like a, like MEXC kind of exchange. So I would say different exchange has its own unique point or different purpose. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is something I will advise my audience as well. Always go mm -hmm. to the the bigger exchanges with larger liquidity. Because currently mm -hmm. my go to is still Binance but I mm -hmm. don't only use Binance, of course, because mm -hmm. you should never put all the eggs in one basket. I mm -hmm. am currently using Binance, KuCoin, and uh, Bybit. These three exchanges are my like go-to options currently, but I will mm -hmm. only use it for trading. And if I'm doing DCA, I'm probably going to transfer it to my uh, ledger or tangent or something. And also mm -hmm. for the audience out there, because Jimmy mentioned something about JPEGs, for you, for your little bit of context, JPEGs turn, turns out to be the biggest scam in Hong Kong financial history. And mm -hmm. I believe they scammed like um, 1.2 billion Hong Kong dollars so far. And wow. yeah, because in the crypto, like in our local native community in Hong Kong, we all hate JPEGs because they were trying to, um, I remember one of the guys from JPEG approached me to, um, to ask me to show the project a little bit on, on my videos, right? And then they were being so demanding that, okay, Jamie, you have to say that JPC reach $1 you have to say that in your own language. I was like, like no, because back then I wasn't like really active in the Hong Kong local com crypto community, right? I was just mm -hmm. like um, doing English content, uh, looking at mm -hmm. the global, like what, what's going on in the global, global wide mm -hmm. scale, right? And then I wasn't mm -hmm. really like pay, pay so much attention to JPEGs. And then when mm -hmm. Exchange approached me, um, I, I told them, okay, but my audience base is from the US, it's, it's global. And then they were like, okay, it's fine. As long as you mention that JPC will reach $1. And I was like, no, there's no way. I'm just gonna give you my honest review. If you can't mm -hmm. do that, I'm not gonna accept your, your, your offer. Uh, mm -hmm. I was like, really sat the food down. And then I slowly, 
um, talk to other local Hong Kong crypto influencers, and then I realized that if the influencer gave that honest review, say something negative about the platform, and then the platform is not gonna, JPEX is just not gonna like it, and probably just gonna hire someone to beat the living shit out of the influencer. So it's like a, a mafia running the platform. So it's like a huge red flag. Well, I uh, probably talked too much and then I have a little bit of rant, <laughs> rant section. But um, last question I want to ask Jimmy is that we have seen CBDCs taking place mm -hmm. in so many countries where there's China, it's not only China, but like uh, I would say one third of the, the, the world is start looking at, into G, uh, CBDCs in uh, mm -hmm. one way or another. Do you think it's going to impact the adoption of crypto or you think it's going to be like a, a found age? I would say like um, it will open their mind and to accept crypto because I like for example, the analogy is kind of like when you are new to a company. I mean, if you are used to travel the world, like if you are used to like take airplane, you are not going. If, like if you are going to, like if somebody asks you to go somewhere, because you are already used to like taking airplane, you will know. Hey, this is safe. So they will, you will be able to. Um, more open-minded to take the airplane to go to other countries. It's kind of like when you are like used to uh, using like this uh, analogy. I mean, if you are used to use uh, CBDC stuff, and if you are like, hey, this is great, then pro probably crypto is great. So that will be um, easier for them. And, and the and the second thing would be like, um, I would say it's easier for um, because I, the whole crypto market is built on that. Say uh, when you when we do trading, we will see uh, if they're like uh, USDT info and outflow. And we would we, like in crypto market right now, we are lacking of like liquidity. We need like new money to come in. So for um, for if the CBDC actually here like if, if, if finally here and then the, when the people are like more open-minded then i would say there are new i would say there will be a higher chance for new money actually to come into the crypto world yeah that's great so that's great i love your answer well i think that wraps up our episode today right i've got some really amazing uh, i've got an amazing talk with you today so thank you jimmy so much for your time and Make sure you subscribe to Jimmy's channel. Of course, all links can be found in the description box below. Until then, see you next time.